YouTube, I just thought I'd do a little quick um, theory video and the schematic of what I am using for my Thorotron Tesla coil. Um, you can see here I've got a microwave oven transformer, then a microwave oven capacitor, and that die that gives me a voltage doubler, half wave voltage doubler. That goes through a charging reactor or a charging choke. And then I have a DQing diode here, which doubles the voltage from here and charges up this capacitor. Now, this capacitor being fully charged, I discharge it through this thyrotron and the energy gets trapped in this LC network. And then we have our spark output. Um, I put a diode, high voltage diode, across the grid for grid biasing. That stops internal arcing and um, stops premature firing from secondary emission. Um, and that just is basically just a pulse uh, of about 200 volts that ionizes this thyrotron. Now, there's a quick calculation you can do what your average current is. It's your capacitance uh, times your change in voltage and then by your pulse repetition frequency. This um, TGI-3-32516 uh, is rated for 400 pulses a second. Um, and this is my charging reactor. It's two micro oven transformers that are being welded together with the secondaries. And that'll, on with about 4,000 volts in, will only allow me to draw with a short circuit about 1500 watt. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you can reduce the inductance and increase the amount it will dissipate by um, grinding out that core there or reducing the amount of windings. And um, the lower the inductance, the more it will pass. Um, so if we say that this is a 10,000 ohm resistor, which is what it effectively is, um, we can calculate the charge time, um, which is 0 0.01 seconds. That to the power of negative 1 gives us a max pulse repetition frequency of 1000, um, because the discharge time is very quick compared to the charge time. So then from there we can say our, our average at 400 pulses per second is 320 milliamp. This is rated for 200 milliamps, so close enough. And with that sort of output, we would be getting 2.5 kilowatt out of our Tesla coil. Um, the unit that I made a video of was only about, uh, I think it was less than 500 watt, and that included the losses in the transformer, so I was just measuring the, the power in to the micro oven transformer. Now this circuit differs from what everyone else has been which is this one here, where you've got the uh, high voltage side, then the voltage doubler through the charging uh, reactor. And then what everyone else has been doing is pulsing the uh, voltage between the capacitor and the inductor. But what happens is energy gets stuck on one side. So this energy can't reverse and can't go back into the capacitor. And what that does is it blows out the anode when you reverse voltage to the thyrotron and you get a very poor spark output instead of getting like a streamer with multiple streams to it which is a radio frequency output you just get little sparks like from an ignition core so I decided I'd do it the other way because to make this work you'd have to have back to back ones one here and then basically this one here would discharge into here and then this one here would discharge into here and that way you'd need isolated fluid transformers for both of them um, being able to withstand whatever the voltages were in the tank circuit it just gets very complicated so uh, what else would I like to say in terms of um, the grid biasing um, you can actually use You can actually use this circuit here from the Thyrotron preamble and um, that'll make your grid negatively biased which will stop 
um, jitter and it'll stop um, premature firing. The actual problem that I had was if you can see inside this tube, um, the grid and the cathode are quite close together so I was actually getting sparking between the grid and the cathode. I have this problem with a lot of Russian thyrotrons um, and the only way I could stop it was with that reverse reverse diode that I've got here and that seemed to um, make it run really smoothly. Now the reason why you use a, a charging choke is to limit the amount of current and also to double the line voltage. The reason why you want to limit the amount of current is Thyrotrons only turn on, they don't turn off. So you need to remove the voltage that's going to them or reverse it completely, otherwise they'll keep going. Because um, they work on uh, it, town sand discharge or something like that, avalanche discharge. They're a negative resistor, which means the more current they conduct, the lower the resistance. So they're impossible to turn off when they turn on unless you remove the input voltage or reverse the voltage. So what this does is, when this is charged, this has got the full line voltage over it um, and then you discharge the thyrotron into the circuit. Now as soon as that happens the current in this capacitor goes through the roof and the voltage that this thyrotron sees is basically zero. Now then the thyrotron deionizes, stops conducting and then this capacitor is charged and you can repeat the cycle. So it's very important. It won't work unless you've got these components here.